Hi everyone, this is Kate Bradshaw from Web Today. I'm also the Wix Ambassador for Sydney and today I'm going to show you some tricks and techniques that I use every time when I'm designing the home page of a website. It's easy to know what to do with Wix but it's hard to know how to get the look and feel just right and that's what I'm going to show you today. Okay, first thing I do is I'm using the Wix editor and I like to start with a blank template. So I'm going to go and select my blank template and I like to start from scratch. Anything else is a bit too restrictive for what I'm going to show you today. Okay, so now I've opened the Wix editor. We don't need the help and introductory videos because you've got me. Okay, so here we are, a totally blank slate. And the first thing I like to do is add a background. That's pretty basic, right? Sometimes I don't quite know what I want my background to be. I don't know if I'm going to want a white background. I don't know if I'm going to want a, uh, a picture background. But for right now, I think I'm going to start with an image. And I'm going to try this one here. Great. Okay, and straight away, this is already how I want my website to look. And for those of you who are overseas, this is my city. This is the Sydney Harbour Bridge and the Opera House. Gorgeous, hey? So the next thing I do, and this is where people who are new to design come unstuck, the next thing I do is I use strips and I really recommend that you start designing using strips. If you haven't discovered strips yet, this is what you need to do. So I'm going to add and I'm going to add a strip and this is just going to be a white one. And I'm going to add another strip and this is going to be a black one. Drag it down here. Now I'm not going to leave these as black and white. It's just that I don't want it there. It's just that I need to know where my strips start and finish. Okay. Now I like to duplicate those strips. So I, if you didn't see what I did there, I clicked the little minus button, and I want to duplicate these strips. So come here, little strip. So now I have my page with a few strips on it. For the header, I'm going to make that a, an overlay of the image. So let's have a look at that. Now I don't want the strip here covering up my, my background, my lovely harbour bridge, so I'm going to move that down now. As you can see, I'm using the large drag arrow to bring it down. What I think looks really good is um, a white, plain white strip underneath your colourful background, if you're using a colourful background. Now sometimes in this position of the background here I might use the slideshow or I might use uh, some kind of strip gallery. So you've got options in that area. This is going to be a little set of text now and I like to add uh, perhaps the about us or something that gives the the uh, viewer a summary about what they're going to see on the site. So I'm going to add some text. One of the things I also like to do very early in the piece is set up my text styles. So this is how I do it. I drag over each type. Just anywhere. Now I can choose how I want these 
uh, fonts to be and styles. So simply edit the text. And I'm not going to choose Proxima Nova for this, uh, this site. I'm going to choose, um, let's see, how about Open Sans Condensed. And I need to save this theme. Okay, so now whenever I uh, choose site title throughout the site, the, it will be Open Sans Condensed. And now I want my other type styles to match. So I do the same process. Open Sans Condensed. That size is OK and save the theme. Now that small heading is about as small as you can go in Open Sans Condensed. And in fact, what I might do with that small heading is uh, increase the kerning or the spacing between letters. So now wherever I go, whatever I do in the site, the headings are going to be the same font, the font that I want them to be all through the site, and so is the paragraph text. And that's going to save me a lot of time by not having to change the site when it goes to its default position, not having to change the font when it goes to its default um, typeface and size. So I'm going to put my site title here. And I'm going to center it. Don't be scared of leaving some lovely uh, white space because that's going to be helpful. Now for these paragraphs, I think it's a good move. It looks nice and neat if you uh, do full justification on your text. So let's make that adjustment now. And I think uh, several columns would be good here. Now you can use Wix's new column feature, which will allow you to go to the extent of the uh, screen. But you don't have to do that uh, if you don't want to. You can just simply use two columns. I used Control D to duplicate that text then, in case you're wondering. OK, and here's where you'll add some text. Radio. So the next site down, I usually like to add another set of pictures. So um, for this strip, I'm going to add a gallery. And this would be a gallery that pertains to what you're doing. So let's have a go at that. Or it might be a set of products. Okay, so I'm going to pretend that we're selling some um, fashion, let's say. And there's going to be three categories, women's, men's, and uh, accessories. How about that? And uh, let's go to the free Wix image library, which has got some fantastic, very beautiful images. And now I'm going to change um, the text on the images. Oh, women. Now you can see the strip there has adjusted itself to the width of the gallery. And that's not quite what I want. And I'd like a bit more space between these images as well. So now I'd like um, some white text on my black background. Right, how about I go and borrow some of this? Control D to duplicate. It's always good to know the shortcuts. Okay, now my title is going to be uh, directive to the people, so let's say shop the look. And this is like a call to action. This is telling the people what I want them to do. I want to add a bit more space. And under each one, I'm, I want to have a description. Probably not in that color. Oh, that little green dot that you see coming up there in the text is um, my grammar checker. But Wix also has its own spell check now, so it's not really necessary. OK, let's change that color. Great. Okay, so now I can describe what happens when you click this image and where you're going to go. Okay, great. So you see how I've left you know quite a bit of space between the top of this strip and its heading and quite a bit of space here again. 
and I want to leave just a little bit more down the bottom here. Now in the next strip uh, I quite like to have something like um, a testimonial. So let's put a testimonial in here. Now what's good to do in testimonials, just going off topic for a minute and talking about SEO, is to hit the keywords because really you want people to know that this is a dress shop in Sydney, uh, it's Sydney ladies fashion or whatever your keywords are and it's great to hit those in testimonials and in text on your site. I think uh, a different kind of image in this strip might be good too. Let's try Girl by the Lake. I need to move the text now. So when you put an image like this with your testimonials, it makes it a little bit more salient. It puts it in context and uh, also makes it a little bit more believable. So there's our testimonials. What comes next? Well, I think a social media feed into the site will come next. We get that from the app market. I think adding a social media stream is a really good enhancement to a client's site, so it's worth considering. Let's just adjust the way this looks now. Now obviously this isn't a fashion feed, it's, a, it's mine. <laughs> the social media tool that I particularly like is eClincher. You can add it to your site and forget it, or you can use it as a full multimedia monitoring and editing tool. So it's really worth getting to know. Then lastly, and perhaps in the footer, we'll put the contact details. And perhaps the logo. We didn't talk about the header. What we're going to put in the header is a logo. Now this is just a, a random logo that I just found. But uh, imagine your fashion logo. I like to put it over here and pin it. Let's pin it to the header. So I'm going to fix my header, freeze it. Now I'm going to pin my logo image to the screen so it can stay there outside the normal boundaries. I also like to make sure I get the keywords in the header, especially if I'm using the logo as an image. So what you can see now is that I've got the basis for a very nice design. So we've got our header, let's have a look at it in preview. Okay, so we've got our header, it's standing off a little way from the background image, that looks great. And I could even have uh, an image in front of this background image as well, which would look uh, lovely, perhaps a lady in one of the dresses. I've got a nice little clean piece of text here. I've got a call to action, what you want the, the person to do next, shop women, shop men, accessories, and that's going to go to our, uh, our store. We've got a testimonial. We've got a social feed so that the buying public know that this business is awake. And we have some contact details and more things in the footer. I think if you use this strip method of design, then you can easily achieve a very nice design in your site. Thanks for watching. This has been Kate Bradshaw on the Wix Editor. My website is webtoday.com.au and I'm the Wix Ambassador for Sydney. If you want to have a look at our training courses, come along to wixwebdesign.sydney or like us on Facebook, My Web Today. Cheers, see ya.